Reproductive system. Reproductive system is not extremely, not an extremely important system in our body because if I take the reproductive system out from your body, you will still survive healthy, normal. Okay? So it is, in that sense, it is not very important system in our body, but it is the most interesting system in our body. Okay? So, the reproductive system is the only system in our body which is completely different in male and female. Other systems, your normal system, your urinary system, those things are um, same, but the reproductive system is completely different in male and female. And that system is responsible for male and female differences. Okay? The hormones are produced by the reproductive system makes male different from female. The external features and behavior, all other things. So anyway, the reproductive system is very interesting because the diversity Diversity of reproductive system is huge. If you see the features, you see some features in the same body, both male and female reproductive systems are present. There are some features. There are some features, part of their life, they are male and they turn into female. And those creatures are both male and female in the same body, they fertilize their own egg. So it is very, very, you know, like divisive what? and very interesting what kind of system. What kind of creature? There are many. You can find out. Figure it out yourself. There are many creatures that, okay? So it is very, very diversive and interesting system in the body. Now, I said that reproductive system is not extremely important because if surgically you remove your uterus or your ovary or, you know, your testes, you will still stay alive healthy. Uh, but just think uh, another way, like if from now, I say that next 150 years, no use of reproductive system, nobody will use the reproductive system, then what will happen? That mankind will disappear, right? No more human being will exist on the earth. So in that way, the reproductive system is extremely important, right? To keep the mankind uh, existing on the earth. Anyway, so uh, today we'll talk about the male reproductive system, which is simpler than female reproductive system. Why male reproductive system? works less than female reproductive system. Very simple, right? Simple, female reproductive system perform, performs more functions than male reproductive system. Male reproductive system is mainly responsible for the production of sperm and the male characteristics. <coughs> female reproductive system are responsible for those two functions as well as maintaining the Pregnancy, fertilization takes place in female reproductive system. Then the pregnancy starts, right? And the pregnancy continues for months, and that is the function of female reproductive system. So it performs much more functions and complicated, more complicated functions than male reproductive system. That's why the system is more complicated, and uh, we have to know more about female reproductive system than male. Okay, so in today's lecture, first we'll talk about the parts of male reproductive system. Male reproductive system consists of primary and accessory organs. So we'll see what are the primary organs, what are the accessory organs. Then we'll talk about the pathway of sperm. Sperm is produced inside the testes, then after the sperm is produced, the sperm gets 
out from the male body, so how the sperm travels. Then we'll talk about the spermatogenesis. Genesis is the production, so spermatogenesis is the process of sperm production. We'll see how sperm is produced and get matured. Then we'll talk about the glands in the male reproductive system. There are few glands present in the male reproductive system. We'll see what are those glands and what kind of secretions they produce. Then we'll talk about the most important organ of male reproductive system. Those are testes. Oil testes are the most important organs because the sperm is produced in the testes and uh, as well as the sex hormones are produced in the testes. Then we'll talk about the scrotum and the functions of scrotum. The scrotum is a sac and that contains the testes and the scrotum is responsible for the regulation of temperature in the testes. We'll see how that task is performed by the scrotum. Then we'll talk about the structure of a sperm, how a sperm looks like. So first, the parts of the male reproductive system, the primary reproductive organs, in case of male, the primary reproductive organs are testes. So testes are the primary or main reproductive organs. And in case of female, the primary reproductive organs are ovaries. Okay, so the ovaries produce eggs and testes produce sperm. Also, the testes and ovaries, they produce sex hormones. So remember that primary reproductive organs in male are testes, in female are ovaries, and they perform two important functions. One is the testes produce sperm as well as <coughs> sex hormones. <coughs> ovaries produce ovum or egg and female uh, sex hormones. Now accessory organs are ducts, glands, and external genitalia. So those are the accessory organs. Now, why we say that testis is the primary male reproductive organ? The reason is very simple. Testis produce sperm. Now, if you take a sperm out from the body, still you can use that sperm to fertilize an ovum. You know that we fertilize the egg outside of the body. Now it's very common, right? So, but if I ask you, can you produce sperm? You cannot. Testes must produce sperm. Then we, you, you will collect the sperm, right? But you won't be able to produce sperm outside of your body, outside of the testes. So, we can fertilize the egg without the back glands and external genitalia. Make sense? We can fertilize without those. We can take an egg, take an sperm and fertilize. So those are not really essential. But essential is sperm. If you don't get a sperm, you won't be able to fertilize. Okay? So testes and ovaries are essential organs. Okay. Why sex hormones are important? Sex hormones perform some important functions. Number one, development and function of reproductive organs. For the growth of reproductive organs, we need the sex hormones. And for the functions of those organs, we need sex hormones. Growth and development of secondary sex characteristics. What are the secondary sex characteristics? Those are the characteristics that <coughs> makes, that make male and female differences, external. Externally, by looking, external 
the appearance or structures, you can tell this is male, this is female. The external appearances are secondary sex characteristics. So now, if I ask you to tell me a few differences, how you can distinguish male and female, you can tell that. Male got both broader shoulders, facial broader hair. Broader shoulder, facial hair. Males have eyes, right? Deeper voice, laryngeal prominence, or Adam's apple, right? So, more muscle skeletal prominent, not true for everybody. Okay. Some females are very muscular. So, anyway, so uh, prominent in general, uh, skeletal muscles, those are secondary male sex characteristics. Okay. In case of females, high pitch voice. You will hear from far, high frequency. And distribution of hair is another, right? Facial hair. Widening of the hips. Yes. So those are the secondary characteristics. In female, subcutaneous fat skin is smooth because of the presence of distribution of fat under the skin. So those are the secondary characteristics. Uh, sexual behavior and drives are also controlled by the sex hormones. You all know that after the puberty, not before the puberty, but after the puberty, when the sex hormones start to uh, get released, then the behavior and drives changes. Okay. So, uh, primary organs are testes, accessory organs are external genitalia. In case of male, external genitalia is uh, the penis and the scrotum. And glands, as I told you, that uh, there are few glands present in the male reproductive system. So, which glands? Seminal vesicles, prostate, and all will be called glands. You need to remember those three glands. And <coughs> so, first we'll talk about the scrotum. Uh, scrotum is a set of skin and superficial marker, and that hangs outside the adrenopelvic cavity contains two testes and the temperature inside the scrotum is slightly lower than the core body temperature. How much lower? About 3 degrees Celsius lower inside the scrotum. And that temperature is very important for the spermatogenesis, production of healthy sperm. That temperature, lower temperature, is very important to maintain. Okay. So the scrotum has a lower temperature. Yes. So how many degrees lower is um, between Fahrenheit, like that, and all of it in the Yes. Yeah. 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 I can't compare it right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do that. Okay. So just know that uh, uh, our body temperature is not good for the production of sperm, healthy sperm. Okay. So that's why the scrotum uh, is holding the testes outside of the uh, abdominal cavity and abdominal pelvic cavity. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, you know, sometimes people love to sit in hot tub, in hot water for a long time. It's not good for the boys, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it can, uh, it, you know, it can uh, temporarily or permanently make the male in part of it. It is possible. <laughs> and also the cells inside the So how, how long would this be long? It depends. Hot temperature, hot temperature, everything. My boyfriend's uncle played quite a professional soccer, and so he took ice baths all the time and couldn't have kids. Because of that? Yeah. Yeah. Ice baths? Yeah. He played like every day. Well, it goes both ways. Yeah, yeah. 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 some temperature. Half or down, both are. Why did he take ice baths? Because he played soccer. Because of the pain? Yeah, lots of athletes take ice baths. It's like you can't go. I 
that's why the escorta uh, inside the temperature is for the temperature below, and then temperature escorta tries to maintain how with the help of muscles. I said that escorta regulates the temperature of the testes and with the help of two muscles. Which two muscles you need to know? One is the rotus muscle and another is the premuscular muscles. So those two muscles help to maintain the temperature inside the scorpion. The rotus muscle is present in the wall of the scorpion. Okay? And the cremaster muscles are the muscle fibers that hang the uh, scrotum inside the, sorry, uh, testis inside the scrotum. So it like hangs the testis inside the scrotum. So one is present in the wall of the scrotum, another is coming from up and holding the testis inside the scrotum. We'll see in the pictures, okay? So just know that those two muscles uh, help in regulation of temperature. So if you see the scrotum here, uh, this is the premuscular muscle. So uh, here they have just dissected the outer covering, and you can see the premuscular muscle fibers here. Now, if you remove the premuscular muscle, then you will see like this: the testis inside and other structures, blood vessels, nerves, you see those. Okay, so first we'll see uh, those two muscles. This is the trimester muscle. Trimester muscle here, okay? And deratus muscle in the wall of the scrotum. Okay, so those two muscles are important. Now, when the deratus muscle fibers will contract, what will happen? The size of the scrotum will get smaller. Okay, so the testes will get close to the pelvic cavity. Will move up. When the trimester muscle fibers will contract, since trimester muscle is holding the testes, then when the muscle fibers will get shorter, the testes will move up. So deratus muscle will make the scrotum smaller and will move the scrotum up and cremaster muscle will move the testis up. And when these muscles should contract, these muscles will contract when the outside body temperature decreases. When the temperature outside of your body decreases, then these muscles try to do what? To bring the testis close to the body cavity, close to your body, move up, make sense? So it will come close to your body, right? And your body is warmer than outside, so the temperature will increase. And if the body temperature increases, inside your body, the temperature increases, then what will happen? Those muscles will relax. So the testes will go away from the body, okay? So we will not get enough heat from the body. Okay. Now we we'll talk about the production of sperm. Uh, sperm are male gametes. Remember that uh, gametes. Male gametes are sperm and ovum are female gametes. So gametes are, gametes indicate both the sperm and ovum. Okay? And the term gonads, you will hear very up often, you will hear gametes and gonads. Gonads are testes and ovaries. Okay. So testes and ovaries are gonads and gametes are sperm and ovum. Okay. So 
So we know that testis produces sperm, and inside the testis, if you see inside the testis, you will see that testis are filled with tube-like structures. Many tube-like structures are present inside the testis, and in the wall of those tubes, the sperm is produced. So the sperm is produced in the wall of those tubules, and those tubules are called seminiferous tubules. So we'll see how the sperm is produced in the wall of the seminiferous tubules. <coughs> so <coughs> see here, inside the sperm, these are the seminiferous tubules. And if you cut the seminiferous tubule, cross section. This is the wall of the seminiferous tubule and the sperm, the sperm cells start to produce from the outer part of the wall of the seminiferous tubule. Okay? So from the outer part gradually the sperm moves towards inside. That means towards the lumen of the Tubule, okay, and so as the sperm, after the sperm is produced in the outer part of the wall of the seminiferous tubule, the sperms start to move towards the lumen and get mature. And the most mature sperm is very close to the lumen, and eventually it will get detached from the wall and will get inside the lumen. Okay, here. So that's how the sperm production. So as takes it moves place. towards the lumen, it matures. Yes. And what is it, once it reaches the lumen, it's already fully mature. Yes. Yeah. Then it will uh, just get detached from the wall. Okay. Here you can see uh, the cross section of the seminiferous tubule. <coughs> And you see here, uh, this is the wall, this is the lumen, and in the wall, you see the sperm at different stages of maturation. So, that's why they look different. You see here, round, but here, close to the lumen, those are elongated. These are mature sperm, okay? So, as they move towards the lumen, they get mature, get elongated, and eventually, Get released into the lumen. Question. Yes. How long does it take to produce a sperm if it has like mature and all that stuff? Uh, after the sperm is produced, it takes few hours yeah. to yeah reach to the edge of the lumen, okay. uh, close to the lumen. Okay. But. When the sperm is released into the lumen, remember it is mature sperm but not fully activated sperm. Then after the sperm is released into the lumen, it starts to travel, right? And on the way of its travel, it gets fully active. Okay? So we'll see that. Uh, you know that uh, you have the intestinal line. Of lady, uh, those cells produce the sex uh, hormone, and so then just uh, know that not very important. So now the testis has two coverings: the outside, tunica vaginalis, and tunica alveginia. Those are two coverings, and the outer one is the tunica medianalis, which derived from peritoneum. We know that peritoneum is the covering of the abdominal and pelvic cavity, right? But the peritoneum also goes down inside the scrotum and covers the testes. And alveginia is the inner fibrous capsular layer. So just know that name, those two layers are the covering. Of the testis. Now, if you see inside the testis, 
the inside part is divided by septa. Septa are uh, connective tissue membranous structures that separates inside the testis into 250 to 300 lobules. And inside each of those lobules, we have one to four seminiferous tubules. Okay? So that's how the inside the testis looks like. So here now you see these are the seminiferous tubules and these are septum. Septum is singular one. Septa indicates more or uh, indicate more than one. So septa separate the lobules. This is one lobule, this is another lobule. And inside each lobule, you have one to four seminiferous tubules, okay? So now, <coughs> we'll see the pathway of sperm. So we know that the sperm is produced in the wall of the seminiferous tubules, and then the sperm is released into the tubule, lumen of the tubule, and then from there, the sperm enters into reti testis, then to afferent efferent ductule, then epididymis, then ductus tetrans, then ejaculatory duct, then urethra, and then gets out from the body. So those are the structures. Uh, second? Yes, I'll show you those parts. So see here. So is produced inside the seminiferous tubule and then released in the lumen and from there the sperm enter into the reti testis, this part. This kind of network of tubules, reti testis. <coughs> and then from the reti testis, the sperm enter into the efferent ductules. These are efferent ductules. And then it will enter into epididymis. This is epididymis, the comma-shaped structure. And this is the head of the epididymis, this is the body of the epididymis, and this is the tail of epididymis. So see here, head of epididymis, then body of epididymis, and tail of epididymis. So its sperm will first be taken into the head part, then from there it will enter into the body part, then from there enter into the tail of the epididymis, is it clear? And then you see that tube at the tail of the epididymis turns upward and start to go upward and becomes straight. And that is called the ductus difference or pass difference, P-A-S has difference or ductus difference, same thing. And that is a straight duct or tube that takes the sperm upwards. That means towards the pelvic cavity. All right? And then from the ductus difference, the sperm enters into the ejaculatory duct and then finally into the urethra and you know that through the urethra the sperm gets out from the male body okay so now you see here rest of the part so we have seen the ductus difference you see here this is the epididymis and then ductus difference is here this is ductus difference of hus difference then it will enter into the pelvic cavity and this is a long tube then it will enter into the ejaculatory duct. This is the ejaculatory duct, and then enters into the urethra. Okay. Okay. So that's the. Lumen, is the lumen the same as tubules rectus? 
Oh, just just ignore that. You don't need to know that part. Yes, that, that uh, tubulus rectus. You don't need to know that. Okay, so just know the other parts that you can see. Okay. Now uh, the external genitalia are penis and scrotum. So we we'll talk about uh, the penis. Uh, it consists of root and tap that ends in the glass penis. So the tap ends at uh, the glass penis. And the foreskin is the extended part of the skin that covers the glass penis part. And you know that some people do circumcision. circumcision and that is the removal, dissection of the pore skin from the uh, covering of the glass penis. And okay, so just know that. Now, if you see inside the penis, you will see two structures are present inside. Those structures, one is called corpora cavernosa, and inner one is called corpora spongiosa. So corpora cavernosa and corpora the corpus spongiosa. Uh, the cavernosa has a lot of spaces in between the tissues. So those spaces are sinuses and get filled with blood and that causes the erection of the penis. So basically the erection of penis occurs due to the blood that enters into the spaces inside the corpora cavernosa. Okay? So this is the longitudinal section, but if you make a cross section, then it will look like this. Okay? So you see two tissue structures. These are corpora cavernosa and one is corpus spongiosa. Corpus is singular one and corpora is two, more than one. So now the corpora cavernosa surrounds the blood vessel. We see the artery here. So inside the corpora cavernosa, you have arteries. And from those arteries, the blood gets out and enters into the spaces inside the corpora cavernosa. Make sense? OK. Now, inside the corpus spongiosum, you have the urethra. So urethra is located inside the corpus spongiosum. And blood vessels are located inside the corpora cavernosum. And those cavernosum are mainly responsible for the erection of the penis. OK. is the part of the penis that's the uh, bottom uh, the you know the part is uh, attaching the penis to the body wall okay so that's the crura so let me see it should be in the picture Okay, uh, 
ductus stiffens uh, is dissected for asectomy. You have probably heard the term asectomy. It's uh, one very effective way of uh, what control. So if you cut the ductus stiffens, usually it's very simple subject. You know that from the scrotum, I showed you that ductus stiffens and pus stiffens go up, right? It goes up and enters into the pelvic cavity. So when it goes up, it is located here in the inguinal area. This is the inguinal area, you know that. And just under the skin, inside the spermatic cord. So that cord is just located in the inguinal area and under the skin. Now, you can very easily do that surgery, make an incision on the skin, cut the skin, and take a forceps and take the spermatic cord out like this, and then just make another incision in the spermatic cord and take the ductus difference and cut. So it is very easy, simple, right? You can do it on the table here. Can I or you can reverse it. Right. Yeah, you can. You can do. Uh, you can connect. No, I don't. So it is. It is very simple surgery, uh, but very effective because if you cut the ductus difference like here, and you can leave it like this, but it is a little bit uh, unsafe. They can get together again. So better if you tie here, tie here or cotter, okay? Then it will not be open anymore. So that's very effective. And now you can ask me where the sperm will go, right? Sperm is actually uh, will be absorbed inside the body fluid. We have body fluid everywhere, right? So it's sperm. Uh, the semen is mainly fluid, but there are millions of sperms there, but those are very tiny, and they will be absorbed and taken by the phagocytic cells in our body and will be destroyed. So it's not, not a problem. Okay. okay. Uh, now, the urethra. Uh, in May, you know that male urethra is much longer than the female urethra. We have talked about this in the urinary system. And male urethra is 15 to 20 centimeter long, and it has three parts. Prostatic urethra, membranous urethra, and spongy or canal urethra. Prostatic urethra is the part of urethra located inside the prostate and membranous urethra is inside the neurogenital diaphragm. Remember that this is a diaphragm. It's a flat muscle, like flat like diaphragm, and the urethra is passing through that. So that's the membranous urethra. And the last part is the spongy urethra. That's the longest part. Okay? So the shortest part is the membranous urethra, which is about two centimeter long. And then prostatic urethra is about 2.5 to 3 centimeter long, a little bit longer than membranous. But prostatic urethra is uh, 10 to 15 centimeter long. You mean spongy? Uh, uh, sorry, the spongy, yeah, penile or spongy. So the spongy is the size of the penis? Yes. Sponsy or spinal urethra is the set of things. What about the membranous urethra? Again? Where is the membranous urethra? It's at the urogenital diaphragm. What is that for? What's that diaphragm? Diaphragm is uh, for, uh, it has a very important function. So that diaphragm is a muscular structure, right? And urethra is inside. So 
if you don't have that diaphragm, then urethra will be open there. So it keeps the urethra constricted. Oh, okay. Kind of a sphincter, sphincter uh, type function. Okay, so that's uh, about urethra. Now, the glands. Uh, we know that three different glands are present in male reproductive system, seminal vesicles. We have two seminal vesicles, and seminal vesicles produce alkaline seminal fluid. So I may ask you, a type of fluid is produced by the seminal vesicles, alkaline fluid. And 70% volume of semen is contributed by the seminal fluid, okay? So the semen is mostly seminal fluid. And then prostate, uh, the male body has one prostate and prostate is located under the urinary bladder, inferior to the urinary bladder and prostate produces the fluid which is slightly acidic. So seminal fluid is slightly alkaline but Prostatic fluid is slightly acidic. You need to remember that. <coughs> and then the vulvo-urethral glands, very tiny, small, uh, pea-sized glands inferior to the prostate, and they produce thick, clear mucus, mucus, slippery secretion. Okay, and that keeps the wall of the urethra slippery, smooth and slippery, okay? Uh, to reduce the friction and facilitates the, facilitates the movement. Okay, now you uh, see the location of those glands. So here. Uh, what is, what's the thick filter The wall of the urethra. So there are two seminal Vesicles, these two, and this is the prostate, and these two <coughs> here, uh, inside the urogenital diaphragm at the sides of the membranous part of the ureter, we have two very small, tiny glands, those are the bubble ureter glands. Okay? So you need to know those glands and what type of secretion uh, they produce. Okay? <clears throat> now, you see here, uh, this is the ductus difference or vas difference. We know that sperm travels inside that, through that, and then the last part, you see here, the last part of ductus difference gets wider, expanded. And that last part, wider part of the ductus difference is called ampulla of ductus difference. Okay? So ampulla of ductus difference is the last part of ductus difference that gets wider or expanded. And now, from the ampulla of ductus difference, you see here, the duct is getting out, and this is the seminal vesicle. So those two structures are meeting together, okay, and forming the ejaculatory duct. So and we can this say is the ampulla and the seminal vesicle join together. Yes, ampulla and seminal vesicle, they join together and form the ejaculatory duct, okay? And so that's, that's actually uh, in the ejaculatory duct, both sperm as well as the uh, seminal fluid. Where does that come from, the seminal fluid? 
produced in the wall of the seminal fascicles. Those are glands, right? Okay. <clears throat> Spermatogenesis is the process of production of sperm. Okay. Uh, now, uh, remember one thing that a mature sperm should have half of the chromosomes, haploid number of chromosomes. Our body cells, normal body cells, have how many chromosomes? 46. 46. Okay? So our body cells have 46 chromosomes. But the sperm and ova both should have half of the body chromosomes. Your sperm should have 23 and your ovum, not the same person has sperm and ovum, so the sperm has should have 23 and ovum should have 23. And we know that fertilization is the meeting of sperm and ovum. So when they join together, how many chromosomes they will make? 46, okay? So that's the first cell of the body, new life. So the gametes, gametes are sperms and ovums, I have told you before. So gametes should always have half or haploid number of chromosomes. And when they will meet together, sperm is coming from father and ovum from mother, both have 23 and they will meet together and from the first cell of the life that will have 46, okay? So we'll see what happens. Uh, you skip this one. Here. Uh, what are the, you need to know here, what are the stages of spermatogenesis? This is very important. So first, the stem cells, those are called spermatogonium. So spermatogonium are the stem cells present here in the outer part of the wall of the seminifera stigo, right? Here, because the new cell will be produced here and then they will start to move towards the lumen. Spermatogonium are the stem cells. And spermatogonium has 46 chromosomes. 2n. 2n means 46. 2 multiply 23. 46. 2 times 23. Okay? So 23 pairs. That's same as our body cell chromosomes, right? Number. Then mitosis will take place in a spermatogonium. And you tell me, you know the cell division mitosis, meiosis. Uh, mitosis will make the new cell, and the new cell should have equal number of chromosomes or half? Oh. Mitosis, not meiosis. <laughs> mitosis will keep the chromosome number same. This what is very important know? to know. That's the basic difference between mitosis and meiosis. Meiosis will reduce the chromosome to half. Okay? And mitosis will keep the chromosome number what? Same. Same. And our body cells should multiply by mitosis or meiosis. Mitosis. Because from one body cell, when new body cell will be produced, it should have 46. Same number of chromosomes, right? right? Because all body cells should have 46. So mitosis should occur. And mitosis is the multiplication that grow the body. Okay? And produce the body cells. Okay. So, Spermatogonium will go through mitosis and will produce yeah. new cells. That is very important because, see here, millions of sperm 
are produced, right, in our body. Millions of sperm are produced. But we have only few spermatogonia in the wall of the seminiferous tube. Not few compared to that, we have very fewer number. So if no mitosis occurs, then we won't get many new cells, right? So these cells are continuously producing new cells by mitosis, okay? And then, what will happen? So just to increase the number, the stem cells will go through mitosis and will produce the daughter cells. And then from that daughter cell, primary spermatocyte will be produced. That's just one advanced stage is primary spermatocyte. And then primary spermatocyte we multiply by meiosis. Here you see here, meiosis will reduce the chromosome number to half. So you see that when primary spermatocyte will produce secondary spermatocyte through meiosis, it will produce half number of chromosomes in each cell. Now, meiosis has two phases. Meiosis is completed in two phases. In first phase, two cells will be produced, and in phase two, meiosis two, two will produce four, okay? So when the meiosis one and two, both will be completed from one cell, how many cells will get? Four. four. Is it clear? So meiosis has how many phases? Two. two. In first phase, one cell will produce two, and in second phase, two will produce four. So at the end of meiosis, we'll get four cells from one cell, okay? But it only splits in half once. No. It only gives half of the amount one time. Yes. The other time is it just doubles what it has. Right, so meiosis means it has two steps. Mm -hmm. And completion of meiosis means both the steps are completed, okay? And we'll get four new cells. So remember, that is another difference between mitosis. I, at the end, I will tell you to tell me, ask you to tell me the difference between mitosis and meiosis. Number one, we got that mitosis occurs to produce new cells in our body, right? Body cells. And mitosis will keep the chromosome same. same. Very good. We've got two differences. Meiosis occurs in the gametes, sex cells, because we know that the chromosome number should go down to half, right? And that should go down only to the gametes, because otherwise uh, fertilization will not make 46, right? So mm -hmm. the meiosis should occur in the sex cells. And in meiosis, the chromosome number will go down to half, because in sex cells, we need half of the chromosomes, OK? And how many phases the meiosis has? Two. And one cell will finally produce how many cells? Four. Four. In meiosis, in mitosis, one cell will produce two. Okay, good. Okay, now the secondary spermatocytes will produce early spermatid. And then you see when the early spermatid will produce less, uh, late spermatid, the shape of the cell, the uh, sperm, will change a lot. The round Spermatid, we become elongated. We get tail and body parts and will become like baby fish. A tiny baby fish that has tail and body parts and the head part. Okay, so this change will occur. So you need to remember that when this change will take place, when the sperm will we converted from early to late spermatid. At that time, the 